Hi folks, welcome back. Thank you for watching. Please do hit subscribe if you haven't done so yet. It really does help when you do that. So today, folks, welcome to the semi-expected part four of the Fane and Celestian comparison videos. So what I did was I took the lovely Fane Ascension A60 Alnico speaker and in three separate videos compared it to the Celestian Cream, the Gold and then the Blue. And I said I was going to make a part four Q&A follow up in a few weeks. I've left it more than a few weeks just to give all your comments and questions a chance to come in. So today I wanted to kind of work my way through those. And most of the points I wanted to cover are kind of various comments rolled into various themes. But there are a few more specific comments that I want to address too. So the first thing I wanted to clear up was about how I made these videos because I got quite a few comments about, you know, how could I guarantee the amp was set exactly the same from one speaker to the next? Or did, did I take the microphones off the amp? Because if I put them back in slightly different ways, that was going to skew the results, obviously. So when it comes to doing speaker comparisons, what I generally do is in whichever amp it is I'm using, I set it as loud as I can without the amp gaining up. And I did have some comments about how can I give a fair representation of these speakers in a bedroom? Well, yes, I am in a bedroom, but don't let the environment fool you. I was pushing some serious, serious SPL. In the standalone original demo of the A60 I shot, one of the amps I had it in, for example, was my Hughes & Kettner Pure Tone, which is a 40 watt Marshall Plexi circuit, non-master volume, and I had that turned up to the point where it was wanting to rip my head off. So that's a 40 watt amp that was absolutely belting. So yes, I'm in this very small room, but I'm pushing some serious volume, probably way more than gig volume, given the volumes people are allowed to play at in venues nowadays. So don't let this deceive you. It's really, really loud in here. My ears were ringing at the end of doing all three of these videos. So I set the amp loud, so the tubes and the power transformer and the speaker are all working, but it's not really gaining up on its own. And then I'll get the gain sound with various pedals. So there's two reasons I do that. Firstly, because we all use pedals nowadays, and it's good to hear how a speaker reacts to different shapes of overdrive, like a mid-push tube screamer thing or a scoopy fuzz thing, for example. But the main reason I do it that way is because I don't have to touch anything. So I have the sound with one click of a foot switch. I'm not second guessing where I had the amp set. Maybe I had it set slightly above three for one speaker and slightly below three for the next, and that's gonna skew the results. I don't have to touch the amp settings. I don't have to touch any pedals. I just hit a button and the exact signal chain with exactly the same settings are there. So that's the reason I use pedals for the gain sounds in speaker demos. But when it comes to the microphones, I use the three close mics that I use for all my demos and I put them on the speaker for speaker A. I think from memory I shot the Celestians first followed by the A60 for all three of the videos. And I get it, get them to the sounding good. I listen back to a clip of the audio and check that everything's working. I then shoot part A of the video and I make sure when I'm micing the amp that they are not touching the speaker grill. So the grill might be here and the frame from the ribbon mic might be there so they're not touching each other because what I then do is I push the amp back, roll it out and go next door, swap the speaker, roll it back in and I've got reference points both on the table it sits on and also the three microphones on the amp so that the amp is put back precisely where it was before like with millimeter precision. So there was no variables there in terms of the mics. The mics don't move at all. The amp moves, but it's put back in exactly the same place. Now, when it comes to mixing the audio, the uh, mic balance is exactly the same for the two different speakers. I balance the audio out so that it's giving the most accurate representation of what I was hearing in the room and then I leave it. So I'm not boosting the condenser mic to get more high end out of one speaker, but not doing it for the second. There's not, nothing like that going on. So any EQ differences or volume differences you're hearing coming out of your speakers are exactly as they came out of the speakers in the amp. There's no compression or EQ enhancement or anything like that going on in the post mix. What you hear is exactly what I heard in the room. So that hopefully clears up you know how I try and minimize the variables in doing a speaker comparison video. Nothing moves, I get the gains from pedals, the mic balance is exactly the same, I don't do any sort of tweaking or normalizing in Pro Tools or anything like that, what you hear is what I got. Now there's two big differences 
overall between the Fane A60 and the various Celestians. And I think the number one was they are designed with a very different philosophy. Because at the end of the day, Fane and Celestian are two completely separate companies. And I have had comments before of people saying, you know, those speakers look the same. Are Fane owned by Celestian by any chance? No, they are completely separate. So Celestian are based in, I think it's Ipswich. A lot of their speakers are made overseas nowadays, which isn't necessarily a good or a bad thing, it's just an observation. All Fane speakers are handmade in Yorkshire. So they're two very, very different companies. Yes, the A60 and the Celestian Alcos look similar in terms of design, but they have to be to an extent. They're 12 inch speakers. The mounting holes have to be in the same place that they fit every amplifier. The, sort of the Alnico magnet bell, it kind of has to be that shape for a guitar speaker. So that kind of dictates how a speaker will look largely. And the way I describe this is it's kind of a difference between like um, a Mercedes and a Ferrari Formula One car. On the surface, they look similar. They're subtly different underneath and they do slightly different things and have different characteristics. But to the naked eye, they might look similar, even though they're designed and built completely independently of each other. One in Brackley, one in Marinello. So, you know, they are completely different, even though they kind of have to look similar to an extent. So no, they are not the same company, but they are designed around a very different philosophy. Celestian, especially in their Alnico speakers, are all about that kind of bitey, aggressive mid-range. The, the Fane is much more kind of flat and a bit more weighty low down. Because why would Fane try and copy Celestian? Because that wouldn't give them any sort of different selling point over buying a Celestian. They're going to go for a different philosophy because they're a different company with a different set of parameters of how they build speakers and going for a different sound overall. Now, I did speak to one of the designers from Fane about the construction of their speakers. And I need to read this to make sure I get it right. The A60 has a thinner cone than the Celestian Alnicos. And the tonal effect that gives is it gives the A60 a slightly more kind of rolled off high end, a more flat mid range and a more kind of thumpy low end. The thicker cone of the Celestians give it that kind of ice picky up mid range thing, which you might like, you might not. As I said, they're just two very different speakers. So yes, there are design considerations and philosophies that are very different between the two companies. So that's one of the main differences we were hearing. But the other was the volume difference between the A60 and the Celestians. The Celestians generally sounded a bit louder than the A60. And I was speculating in the videos as to why that is. And there's a few different reasons why it could be. The first could be sensitivity rating. You know, speakers have different sensitivity ratings. Some are genuinely louder than the others. Not the case in this because the A60 has exactly the same sensitivity rating as the three Celestians of 100 watts. And I think the way they measure that is you give the speaker one watt of pink noise, I think, which is a bit like white noise, but it has an equal energy throughout the sonic spectrum. And you give it pink noise with one watt and measure it one meter away from the speaker, I think, and whatever the decibelometer says is the sensitivity of the speaker. But the A60 and the Celestians are exactly the same. So that shouldn't be playing into it. The age of the speaker and how many miles it has on it, the break-in, will have some effect. And that's one thing I was speculating about because the Alnico Gold, for example, came in my Dr. ZZ rec and that amp was made in 2013. So it's seven, eight years old and has a lot of miles on it. Whereas the Fane I'd only had for a couple of months when I shot those videos. So it definitely had its 15 hours of break-in, but it was a much newer speaker with much less miles on it than the Celestian. And it's kind of the same for any mechanical manufactured product. Like if you ever buy a new car, for example, a manufacturer will say, drive it very carefully for the, for the first couple of thousand miles while everything loosens up and bends in. And the speaker's no different because when you take a speaker out of the shrink wrap, it's going to be quite stiff. And the more you play it and the more it moves, the more those mechanical parts start to loosen up a little bit. And in theory, that should kind of slightly mellow the top end out a little bit. The brighter the speaker will ever sound in theory is when it's fresh out of the box, but also it'll make the speaker a bit more dynamic and responsive because it's that much looser internally. So you hit the guitar and the speaker is much quicker and easier to react. It's much less stiff feeling. So that could have been playing into it a little bit. 
the power rating of the speakers plays into it too. Now in the three videos, the Gold, which is a 50 watt speaker and the A60, which is a 60 watt speaker, were kind of the most equal. But in the other two, we had quite big offsets between the power ratings. So in the last video with the Celestian Blue, for example, that's a 15 watt speaker and I was using a 10 watt amp. So that was getting a good amount of power within what it can take, whereas the A60 was getting a sixth of what it can handle. And the more you push a speaker within its parameters, the more compression you'll get out of the speaker. And the more compressed the sound is, generally the more we perceive it as being loud. So that could have been playing into it, especially with the cream and the blue comparisons, not so much the gold. But I think the, the absolute biggest reason why the Celestians were sounding louder to us than the Fane was because the Celestians have that upper mid push. Now, if you've ever studied physics or you've ever mixed like music, as in mixing a song in Pro Tools, for example, you'll almost certainly know this. But if you don't, go on Google and type in something called the Fletcher Munson curves. And essentially what that is, is it shows us how the human ears react to different frequencies and volumes. So the two things that the Fletcher Munson curves show us is the louder a sound is, the more our ears and brain kind of normalizes the EQ. So sitting here right in front of the amp that was absolutely belting loud, I didn't hear too many differences between the A60 and whichever speaker I was comparing it to. Listening back to it at sort of civilian volume in Pro Tools, I was hearing much more of a difference. So that's the first part of the Fletcher Munson curve, but the, the sort of second and most relevant part to this video is it shows us that the human ear is much more sensitive to upper mid-range frequencies. I think 3.2K is like the most sensitive frequency for the human ears. So if we take two sound sources that are the same volume, but one is you know much more centered around 3K and the other's lower down, we will perceive the 3 K signal as being louder because our ears are much more sensitive to that. So even though the A60 and the Celestians have the same sensitivity rating, with the upper mid push of the Celestians, we will perceive that as being louder. But also, the Celestians were kind of boosted in those frequencies. If you compare the two graphs, the Fane has a much more kind of flat mid range, whereas the Celestian is more boosted. So in a way, it's a little bit like adding a boost pedal, but with those kind of sensitive frequencies. If you've ever kind of mixed a song in Pro Tools and you've added an EQ something and really put a big boost in, you'll see that the overall level goes up because you're boosting frequencies. If you scythe out a load of frequencies, there's less content there, so the SPL goes down. So having that kind of boost, as it were, in the upper mid range of the Celestians, it will create a slight difference in SPL because guitars are mid-frequency instruments. That's where the guitar lives. So even though measuring the sensitivity using all the sort of you know factory laboratory tests show that they are the same sensitivity rating, the Celestians will sound a bit louder because of that upper mid push. That's just physics. So that's the second reason why I think the Celestians were sounding louder than the A60. Now, another comment that came up here, and I am going to make a more standalone video about this in a few weeks, because it's something that comes up across a lot of my videos, and I think it's really important to discuss. I got a comment here from Jeremiah Wonder, who says, all I hear are highs and mids, no low end coming through on my speakers. Now, I think the reason I wanted to make a standalone video about this is how you listen to a YouTube demo or a comparison is very important in terms of getting the picture of what the demo person is trying to get across to you. Now, when it comes to like home hi-fi systems or recording studio monitors, for example, they tend to have quite big diameter speakers in there because you need that diameter and the sort of the physical air for those speakers to move to replicate low frequencies. Now, little like earbuds and laptop speakers and tablet speakers and phone speakers, they're really small. So they're pretty good at, you know, nowadays at least, at replicating sort of mid frequencies and high frequencies, but they can't shift enough air to accurately reproduce the lows. So in a video such as this, I'm guessing Jeremiah here is listening on a very small speaker because they say they can't hear any low ends, but they can hear highs and mids. So Yes, of course, you can listen to comparisons such as these on a laptop, for example. I do it all the time. And you can get a good amount of the differences coming through on those small speakers. But especially with regard to the low end, you're not going to get a full representation of what 
the true differences are between the speak two speakers out of a laptop. So just because you don't have studio monitors doesn't mean you're banned from listening to videos on YouTube and having an opinion, of course it doesn't. But just be aware that if you're listening on small speakers, you might not be getting the full picture, especially of the lower frequencies. Now, in terms of the differences between the A60 and the various Celestians, I think the overwhelming gist of your comments was, it's all down to personal preference. And also it's down to how a certain speaker suits a certain amp. Because with the um, the Gold, for example, I was comparing the A60 to the Gold in my Dr. Z Z-Rec. And in that amp, you might have thought one speaker sounded better than the other, or you might have preferred one over the other, whatever. If I'd taken those two exact same speakers and put them in a different amplifier, you might have had a completely opposite opinion. So the speakers need to match up to the certain amp circuit. But also, as I said, it's all down to personal preference. I really like kind of bright, chimey, defined guitar sounds. Some people really don't. So I'm not even gonna try and pronounce this username, but this person says, that was a really good demo, sounded great. For fame for me, Celestian is a shortcut to tinnitus. And that's the upper mid thing that, as I said, gets right in your ear hole. It's gonna sort of fatigue your ears very quickly. The Fain was definitely a more pleasant sound to sit here in front of an amp that was belting listening to it. I could listen to the Fain for longer than I could the Celestians. That upper mid thing does wreck your eardrums quite quickly. And Bill Ayres says, the Fain would be my choice. The brightness of the gold is impressive, but could become fatiguing and possibly too dominating in a mix. Yeah, I would agree. It depends what mix you're in. If you're in a really dense rock mix, those kind of upper mid frequencies are the ones that will get you heard. So you might want that. But if you're in an acoustic trio, for example, and your <laughs> your amp is absolutely ripping your head off with 3K, you might want a more relaxed speaker in that setting. So it's all personal preference because as the Tone Lounge says, the blue to my ear sounds the best, hands down. And William Rackham says, clean, fain. Once things got dirty, the Celestian blew it out of the water. Or whenever, it's not just the volume either. The Celestian sounded way more open and alive. So as I said, there are two kind of distinct groups of people. Some people really love the Celestians and th there may be a bit of cognitive bias coming into that as well or sort of familiarity because we've all listened to the Celestian Blue for example since the 60s. The A60 Fane is quite a new speaker in terms of design. It has a kind of classic sound to it, it's not a sort of modern voice speaker but it's you know it's a new speaker and we haven't been listening to the A60 since the 60s. So, you know, we tend to like things we're familiar with and new things we're a bit more skeptical of. So there could be a familiarity coming in here. I think HGO says, Celestian sounds more old school to my ears. And that might be because we've been listening to it for so much longer than we've listened to an A60. So there could, you know, be that playing into it. But the comments were pretty much 50-50, which did surprise me. I thought we were going to get a lot of kind of Celestian love and because the Fane is different, people don't like it. It was roughly down the middle. A lot of people preferred the Fane in all three of those videos, which was really great to hear because that's what I was trying to prove. It's the fact that those two speakers in each of those three videos are equally good as each other. They're just a little bit different and it will come down to personal preference and amp and what guitar you're using, what pedals you want to use and context and what band mix you're in, all those sorts of things as to which works best for you. So there's no better or worse, there's, they're just a little bit different. And as I said, designed with a pretty different philosophy. Now there's a couple more points here I'm gonna sort of throw in just before I sign off. A lot of people were talking about two by 12 cabs and how they'd love to hear like the A60 paired with the Alnico Cream, for example, in a two by 12. I am gonna do this. Later on this year, I'm gonna make it my mission to get hold of a two by 12 cab and look into speaker pairings a lot more. It's something I've never really done, aside from kind of pairing two different amps together. I've never done two speakers coming out of one amp, as it were. So I've only really got one by 12 combos here. So I'm gonna try and get hold of a two by 12 cab and dive much deeper into speaker pairings. Because again, speaking to the guys at Fane, they were saying that like the A60 and the F70, the ceramic speaker that I demoed a few weeks ago, they're sort of voiced to complement each other and you can get outstanding results running the two together in a two by 12. So I'm gonna look much more into that later on this year. I'm gonna get hold of a two by 12 and look a lot more at speaker pairings. And finally here, a, car, a comment from Kurt Anlund, I think. Sorry if I've just butchered your name, Kurt. 
If you open up the treble on your amp, will the fain come closer in presence compared to the blue? Blue has a thinner bottom end in its sound. Given that, given that one, given that one some more mid range, will it get closer to the fain? Yeah, absolutely. All those frequencies are still there in the fain. It's just less hyped in the mid range. The mids are more flat. So if you put more mid range into it, you're going to get more mid range. It's not like those frequencies are missing from the speaker. It's just a more flat response. So that's another danger, I suppose, of doing comparison videos is that the settings you use in an amp or pedals or the guitar you choose or whatever, it's always going to be more suited to one of the two things you're comparing it to. And a slight adjustment on settings can radically change the results. But of course, I can't do that in the video because that will skew the results and it won't be a fair test. So yeah, absolutely. You know, if you have a graphic EQ pedal, for example, take a tiny bit of the low end out and boost those kind of 3K mid frequencies. And all of a sudden you've made the fame sound 90% closer to the Celestian Gold, for example. So yeah, absolutely, how you set the amp, how you set your pedals, a graphic EQ, for example, you can absolutely compensate for any differences between them um, just by changing settings. But I couldn't do that in the videos. But yes, those frequencies are all there. You can boost them, you can cut them. It responds exactly the same, the A60 compared to the Celestians. It just doesn't have that kind of kick in the upper mids. If you scoop those upper mids, you can make the Celestians sound a lot more like the Fane, for example. So, you know, it's all relative. It all depends on how things are set. So there we are, folks. Now, I hope that clears up a few things about those three videos and how I made them and, you know, the differences between Fane and Celestia in terms of their philosophy and things like that. If you have any more questions about those comparisons, drop them in the comments below. And if I can answer them, I absolutely will do. But for now, thank you ever so much for watching. I hope this video is interesting and useful for you. And I will see you next time. Bye bye.